Paul Turner, the Immigration Barrister at Imperium Chambers. Towing. So it appears all the complaints made by individuals over the years about the government and ETS and the handling of the issues um, were at the very least arguably made out. As you all be aware from previous broadcasts, there are a number of uh, inquiries into the TOEIC issue. The all-party parliamentary group, headed by uh, uh, the Right Honourable Stephen Timms MP and the House of Commons Public Accounts Committee. On the 18th of July 2019, the APPG published their report. It makes a damning reading and I feel very sorry for all those that are, have been affected by the um, uh, Home Office's refusals. I intend to go through the summary of the report. Um, if I was to go through the report in its entirety, it would be a very long broadcast. Most of you would have fallen asleep, by the way. I've got halfway through it. That's because the report is so damning. I could retype parts of it or extracts from it, but I don't think I will because I don't think that would serve any useful um, purpose. What I will do is I'll look at some of the summary of the findings and uh, perhaps explain um, why as a practicing practitioner um, I find it quite frustrating. The first finding was that the um, all party uh, group found that there was fundamental flaws in the evidence. Apparently all the experts agreed that the evidence provided that by ETS the Home Office was questionable and that all but one agreed that it would contain fundamental flaws that should make it impossible um, to take decisions um, on that evidence alone. But that's what the Home Office did, causing thousands of people misery. They also disregarded huge numbers of anomalies in the results. Questionable students were supposed to be given an opportunity of taking a new test. Apparently for uh, a lot of people that never happened they were never given the opportunity god knows why but it didn't happen um, thirdly the home office consulted experts confidentially in 2014 but ignored their advice in august 2014 after thousands of students had already had their visas cancelled the home office convened a confidential meeting with experts um, all the experts agreed that the voice recognition software and the evidence was not good enough. At that meeting, the Home Office officials said, should they re-shore up the evidence or redo it? Now, if I was representing an appellant and the evidence wasn't good enough and I was suggesting to redo the evidence um, or, or shore it up, um, I would be very careful uh, as to my professional obligations. But the Home Office didn't bother to do that. What is clear, says the report, is that the Home Office was content to use the evidence that they suspected was not reliable to revoke the visas of tens of thousands of students and forcibly remove thousands of students from the country. It's on, almost on a par with Windrush, in my opinion, despite every expert at the meeting represent, requesting more information in order to reliably as, assess the evidence that had been provided. Furthermore, the Home Office established a support group and the purpose of this support group was to allow students who'd had the college's licences revoked to re-enrol. It wasn't headed by somebody that was independent, it was headed by Peter Millington. Now, a lot of people that have practiced will have seen Peter Millington's name often. He's one of the people that wrote one of the witness statements that the Home Office rely upon in all the um, TOEIC appeals. Yet he was also supposed to be helping students um, obtain new colleges. When the students asked him to sort of like put their concerns towards the government and deal with this issue, what actually happened was um, Mr. Millington said that he refused to sign the letter on the basis that he couldn't write such a report to his boss. Those are his words. Uh, I've quoted them. Um, the Home Office also failed to look at anomalies in the evidence. Despite mounting evidence of a large number of uh, anomalies, the Home Office just refused to investigate. They were quite happy to rely on the questionable evidence and rely on the evidence that clearly has not stood up to scrutiny. Uh, even more disturbing is that ETS was one of the, the two companies that were used, uh, ALPS being another organisation, 
um, for verifying people's ability to speak English to uh, go on and, uh, and acquire caste and study and stay in the United Kingdom. ETS was the other. ETS, uh, so the uh, group concluded, um, was effectively a company that was described as being a shambles. That in itself is damning and shows that the Home Office clearly didn't investigate ETS or its internal mechanisms properly. Um, uh, penultimately, students that have won their appeals, that have suffered for years since 2014 and have finally had their names cleared, have still not been able to enrol upon courses and finish their education. An individual that, say, enrolled upon a master's degree in 2014 and then had their visa cancelled and now wants to re-enrol has had problems, partly due to the fact that there's this five-year interregnum um, before this problem has been sorted out. And lastly, and most disturbingly, is the financial, emotional and ruin to many thousands of families that have either had the choice of going home um, and not clearing their name or alternatively remaining in the United Kingdom and living off savings, borrowing, begging money, whatever they've had to do to survive. Um, this report, I mean there is another report coming, this report shows that this is a, an absolute scandal of the highest, um, reg well, as I say, it compares in my view to the, the Windrush scandal. Um, the APPG put out some recommendations in respect of TOEIC um, that there should be no further de uh, detentions or forced removals based on account of TOEIC. People who lost their visas because of ETS accusing them of cheating should be allowed to sit a new English language test. The immigration record of every person who passes the new test should make clear the allegation of cheating no longer stands. Higher and further education institutions should be advised that the TOEIC allegation and related issues in students' studies should be wholly disregarded and a working group should be established to support students. Financial support should also be provided to help students who have lost their uh, fees as a result of the TOEIC allegation to complete their studies. And finally, they recommend that the Home Office should work with the High Commissions in relevant countries, including Pakistan, Bangladesh and India, to ensure those who have returned home or been forcibly removed are informed about these arrangements, thus giving them the opportunity of coming back to the United Kingdom. I hope this has been of some use. I will further update um, on the Public Accounts Committee report once that is out. Um, but at the moment, uh, that's all I can really say on the matter. Um, this has been Paul Turner, the Immigration Barrister at Imperium Chambers.